Hey guys, my name is Tensor. Today we're going to be looking at the new module system that was added in the Rust 2018 edition. A lot of people found the original module system to be a bit confusing, especially when they first started working with Rust. In an effort to make it a little bit easier to understand, they've added a lot of new features that make it much more intuitive. Now, first of all, I recommend that you guys go ahead and update your version of Rust so that you can use these new features. And to facilitate that, I recommend that you download the RustUp tool if you haven't already. RustUp will allow you to have multiple different Rust tool chains on your system at the same time. So you can have the nightly tool chain and the stable tool chain at the same time. Also, I won't be covering every little niche case in the module system. So you can come to this edition guide and check out some of the new changes. Now, there are a lot of changes to Rust 2018 outside of the module system and we will get to some of these in their own videos. For instance, I'm going to make a video on futures and streams, and I'm also going to make a video on the new trait system and the new lifetime modifiers. With that out of the way, if you've gone ahead and you've created a new project with Cargo on the latest version of Rust, you'll notice that inside of your cargo.toml, you'll have a new key called addition, and the addition will be by default set to 2018. If you're working with an older project, you can go ahead and add this key and then add 2018 as well, and then that will give you access to these new features. Now, as far as I know, most of these features are not breaking changes, so you should be able to still use the old 2015 notations without any problem, but there might be some small use cases where you do have some kind of breaking change. So I do recommend that you migrate your code from 2015 to 2018 fairly slowly. There's also a tool that you can use which will take 2015 code and change it into 2018 code and I'll link that tool in the description of this video so that you guys can go and take a look at it. Now notice for this project, I've imported two libraries, Lazy Static and Rand, and we're going to use these two libraries in our example. So in Rust 1.0, if you wanted to bring in an external library, you would have to use the keywords extern create followed by the name of the library. And if the library had macros that you wanted to use, you would have to use this procedural macro above the import to tell the compiler that you want to bring in those macros as well. None of this is necessary anymore. So instead of calling extern create, I can go ahead and just say use and then the name of the library. So in this case, I'm just saying use rand and that allows me to call rand random. And then with the lazy static macro, I can directly import it because it is now at the root of the lazy static library. So if you have a library and that library has macros inside of it, those macros will now be located inside of the top sub module of the library by default. And this is something that was added to the macro system to make it much easier to work with the new module system. I also plan to make a video on the macro system, so we'll go into more detail about the specifics of this feature. So as a summary, if you want to use an external crate in your project, all you have to do is add it to your cargo toml file. And then once you've done that, you can just reference it like you would with any other module inside of your application. So as you can see here, I'm inside of a sub module called sub and inside of a function called example. And I can go ahead and just call rand random without using the use keyword first. So I don't have to specify that I'm importing an external module in any way, shape, or form. It just works. There is one exception to this rule for now, and that has to do with the sys root crates. These are crates which are distributed with Rust itself, and they will eventually work like this, though for now they do need the external crate declaration. With the external crate keywords, we could also import libraries with an alias using the as keyword. 
So in this case, I'm importing rand and I'm saying alias it as r, and then I can go ahead and use it inside of the project. Of course, now we don't use extern crate, so we need another way to alias our libraries if we want to do that. So now instead, we can alias the library just using the use keyword. And we can just say use rand as r like that. And as you can see here, we can still reference it as rand inside of a submodule, but inside of the module that we're saying use rand as r, it is referenced to as r. Along with all of these other changes, they've made some pretty big changes to how submodules work. So in the past, if you wanted to make a submodule, say example, and you wanted to put it into a folder so that that submodule could have other submodules attached to it, you would have to use a mod.rs file. And a consequence of this is the fact that you couldn't have a file called example.rs as well because then it would just get confused and it wouldn't know which one was the submodule. Now, instead of having the mod.rs file, you create a file called example, which acts like that mod.rs file, except it's not inside of the folder. So example is a submodule of our main.rs file, and it has two submodules associated with it, and those submodules go into a folder called example. So as you can see here inside of example.rs, we have mod sub and mod sub two. And that means that these two files are now submodules of our example submodule. Personally, I find this to be a bit easier to work with and to reason about. Since the file and the folder have the same name, you know that everything inside of this folder is associated with the file, whereas before you just had the folder and the mod.rs. And it wasn't clear that the mod.rs file was the main module of the folder. Now, along with these submodule changes, there have been some more path changes. So how we reference submodules and modules outside of our application and stuff like that has changed slightly and it has become much more consistent. So inside of both of these submodules, I've created functions. So this just prints out from sub and then this other one just prints out from sub two. They're both called sub of course, and they're using pub so that we can access them inside of our main.rs file. Also inside of example.rs, both of these modules are public as well. So say I wanna call those two functions from our main function. I can go ahead and use the use keyword to get example sub and example sub two. And if I wanted to, I can preface both of these with a crate keyword. And what this crate keyword does is it basically just tells us that these two sub modules exist inside of our main crate. Now, of course, the crate keyword in this case is not necessary, so I can just take it away because example is a submodule of main. So we can still call to example sub and example sub two by simply just calling example sub and example sub two like this. And then, of course, inside of main, we can call the two functions just by referencing the submodules. Now, let's say, for example, we want to do the same thing that we did before with our main function, but with another function that we'll just call a function. So we want to call the sub function from both sub and sub two. We can just use the create keyword and then of course reference them using example and sub and sub two. Now because example is not a sub module of test, you can see that when I take away the create keyword, both of these imports start to throw errors because it doesn't know where these modules are supposed to be in context with the test module. This crate keyword can also be used as a visibility modifier. So with our function here called a function, if we want to expose this function to our entire crate, we can just say pub and then in parentheses we can put crate. And what this does is it just makes it so that we can call this function inside of the crate, but it can't be called from outside of the crate. So if we were to use this project as a dependency, then we wouldn't have access to the a function function. But if we were just to specify it as pub and not say crate, then this function would be accessible from outside of this crate. 
We can also use the super keyword as a visibility modifier. And all this really does is it exposes this function to the ancestor module of the submodule. So in this case, it exposes it to our main submodule. So if I go ahead and I wrap the test submodule in another module called sub, then a function can only be called from inside of the sub submodule, and it can't be called in our main submodule anymore. Another way that we can expose this function only to the submodule is by explicitly saying that we want it to be in that submodule. Here we're just saying in create sub. So now this function is only visible inside of the sub submodule. I'd say that this last type of visibility modifier is pretty niche, but it can be useful if you really need to divide your functions and submodules and data from one another. Here's another example of how the paths work. So for instance, I'm calling to the external ran random function inside of this submodule test. And we've also got another submodule inside of test called sub, which has a struct called sub which we only want to be accessible inside of the test submodule. Then we can also say use sub sub in here. And then we've also got an enum here, which is public to our entire application and to any external applications. And then we've got our a function down here, which is accessing the standard library. And it's also accessing our enum. And of course we can pattern match on that enum. So the use keyword can work in various different contexts. The way that we're importing all of this stuff can work in any context. So even if we were to wrap this in multiple submodules, or if we were to just take all of this code and put it into our main.rs file directly, it would all still work. The final thing I want to take a look at today is how imports have changed. It's not very uncommon for you to see imports that look like this from the standard library. So in this case, I'm importing from standard FS, I'm importing from standard IO, and I'm importing from standard path. And of course, all of these use statements share the standard library in common. To make things easier, Rust has given us nested import statements. So as you can see here, I've taken all of these use statements and I've combined them into a single statement. Because they all come from the standard library, we can just say use standard and then use some curly brackets to get FS, IO, and path. And of course, this will work for any kind of submodule and any kind of type. So say I wanted to import from our example module a bunch of different types and maybe some functions from the sub submodules as well. I could do that all in a single use statement. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the box below. And if you just like this video, then by all means, download it as much as you like. If you want to see more videos like this, then go ahead and click that notification bell. And if you'd like to support the channel, then go ahead and check out the Patreon. Have a good night.